Welcome to Land the House. In a previous video, I installed a Kawanda screen to take water down to my micro hydro turbine. I've got a couple of things going on here. Well, first of all, check out the leaves that are stuck to this thing. The flow rate has been pretty consistent. So it looks like we're missing some of the water that should be going in. Let's brush those off and see if that stops. Yeah, so I'm thinking that I would have to have a pretty good rain to wash that amount of leaves off. But anyway, it's going in better now. So uh, it's not 100% uh, efficient, but definitely pulls a lot of water in. So uh, here's the issue I'm having. Whenever I built this, my rock is slanted back. And so my whole catchment box is just slanted down. And there's a little gap here where my water is going into this gap and falling out over here on the side. So an attempt to remedy that, I have got some roof rubber. I think it's a uh, eighth inch roof rubber. And I'm just gonna cut a square of that that will fit, hopefully, down in here. I can just uh, screw that in and have the flap bridge this gap, probably touch right around here just to get the water over that and have a nice, even, smooth fall across there. We'll see if it needs to do that or if it needs to stop right on the edge to uh, allow that not to be on the smooth surface. Anyway, we'll see which one works better. But for now, let's go ahead and cut a piece of rubber because I can definitely see water is falling down into that crack. So my hope is that I can cut this piece so that it will fit not only down here flat, but also kind of curve around. So maybe it'll capture any of the water that it's going around the sides there, kind of like that. Um, so, maybe what I'll do is just go ahead and get this attached in here and then cut it where I need it to fall. And I'll have plenty of extra if I make a mistake. This is what I did. I rerouted the water over a little bit so it's easier to work with. And then I put some uh, aluminum bar down here on the corners and then right here in the middle. And the water waste seems to be almost completely gone. Just a few little drips down in there. Um, I may be able to work on that a little bit better. I uh, had to throw away one of my sleeves for my impact driver and I don't want to get that down into the water. So what I need to do is get another piece of like that aluminum bar right there and uh, fold it down in here so that the uh, the flap down there stays down. Let me see if I can adjust this filter so you can see through the water. Mm, nope. Anyway, so basically there's a flap down there that just needs to be pushed down a little bit more. But this right here seems to be bringing the water over the edge really nicely. Let's see if we can clear these leaves back enough to see how much water we're not consuming from this system. So that right there seems to be it. Not sure how much that is. Probably a gallon every, I don't know, three minutes or so. Anyway, it'll be nice to keep some water in the creek, this little section right here, until we get down to the barrel. That slight increase of water was just enough to be too much for a single inch and a quarter pipe. And there is just a tiny bit of overflow happening here outside of the uh, input holes, which is nice. So that just shows that we captured just that much more water. 1,100 feet of two inch poly pipe drops 150 feet of head pressure down here to my actual turbine. Let's see what our pressure is at the moment. We've got about uh, 65, I believe. Not sure how well it's gonna show up for you. Um, so there's a problem and that is uh, somewhere in this nozzle right here, there is debris. So uh, the rest of them seem to work just fine but the main one coming down needs to be cleaned out. So I also have a problem where there's a leak 
where the uh, turbine meets this PVC trim. And I want to put some uh, regular old bicycle inner tubes. Let's see here. Just like this as kind of a gasket in there. So let's go ahead and pull the turbine out using this uh, two inch union and then clean out that nozzle, set this back down in here on some bicycle inner tubes. So hopefully the water will start, uh, stop seeping out of there and start going down here to our clear housing. So let's go ahead and do that now. What's the chances of this being hand tight? Oh, hey, nice. I was actually kind of concerned because that's the only uh, tool I have right there. Anyway, let me do this with two hands and I'll bring you along for the next step. Let me see if my wires are long enough for me just to set this up here on my box. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna work out pretty good. So hopefully all I have to do here is unscrew this one nozzle, clean it out, and then I can uh, put it back where it needs to go. So let's go ahead and unscrew that now and just see what we're dealing with. Luckily the other three nozzles will hold this. Oh wait, that one's clogged up too. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some stuff in there. I may have to clean out more than one, obviously. Okay, yeah, so we got a leaf in there, stopping it up, and then a bunch of uh, silt. Let me see what I can find to stick in there. All right, got that one cleaned out. Let me reattach it, and we'll take off this other one that has problems over here. I cleaned out this other side. It seemed to be just leaves and junk. I'll probably go ahead and just take this one off just in case. I know this one's working well. It's actually a larger nozzle. These are 3 16 I believe, and that one is a quarter. And so it, I think, passed everything that had gotten in there. But this one's dripping slowly, so I'm guessing something is blocking it. All right. Yeah, I'm glad I checked this one. It's also clogged up. Huh. Yeah, all kinds of stuff in there. Okay, let me put my washer back on here, get this reattached, and I think we'll be ready to turn everything on. Of course, that's after we get that uh, inner tube in there. It took me forever to get this thing back in here. I just put one inner tube and it's not enough, so it still has quite a lot of splash. But anyway, let's go ahead and crank this thing up and see how well it spins. I gotta get me a new valve. This one is no good here. So you can see there's still some water bubbling out right there. So that's one valve or one nozzle open and we're still running at uh, 65 so that's good all right it's nice to have this thing back up and running hydro's got between 80 and 90 watts coming in at the moment i've also got solar coming in if that'll focus here got 520 or so watts coming in on that and the house is consuming, looks like 140 on that inverter and 230 on that inverter. I believe the intake Kawanda screen is working well now. I may still want to adjust the tilt so that the water pours into it a little slower, but it seems to be working quite well. Cleaned out the nozzles on the hydro unit and that is now working like it should. With one nozzle, it's doing 85 to 90 watts. 
and that's with the sun um, on the panels as well so that may increase to a hundred tonight whenever the sun goes down now the next video for solar and hydro will be to move all of this stuff to my outside power shed so definitely make sure you subscribe and notification bell so that you can stay updated for moving all of this out from under here i don't have to uh, stoop down and work anymore and i'm also going to be reworking all of this cable mess here so that it is uh, a lot more neat and tidy but anyway thank you so much for watching and uh I guess I will see you in the next video.